When calculating confidence intervals to estimate the population mean, we need to determine whether or not we're going to be using the normal distribution and z-scores, or if we're going to be using the student t-distribution and calculate or find a t-value. Depending on which one we use, it's going to alter how we calculate our margin of error. So in this example, we want to create a 95% confidence interval to estimate the average yearly income of doctors. We sampled 40 doctors. We have a mean of 145,580 and a standard deviation of 13,200. We need to determine whether or not we're going to be getting a t-value for the margin of error or the z, a, use a z-score like we did when we, uh, in our previous problems and when we use and estimated the population proportion, we found a z-score. So let's determine, and how do we determine it? First of all, I'm going to write down what I know. I know that the confidence interval here is 0.95, that means my alpha is equal to 0.05, and if I were to split that in half, my alpha in 2 would be equal to 0.025. So regardless if we're using a T or a Z, we're still going to need that information. I see here that the sample mean is 145,000, 145,580, and my sample standard deviation is 13,200. So how do I know? Do I use a t-score or t-value or a z-score? This actually is going to be, if you look on the internet and you find videos, there are some videos and some textbooks that will actually differ on how we determine which to use. What we're going to do is to determine whether or not the population standard deviation is known. In this example, do we know the population standard deviation? I know the standard deviation is 13,200, but that's from the sample. So do I know this? No, it is not given. Therefore, we are going to use the student t distribution. We're going to use the student t distribution, which means we have to calculate or find a t value. Now we're not just looking for a t value with 0.025 in each tail. We are actually doing that. We're looking for a t value with 0.025, but that's not the only thing we need. We also need these degrees of freedom, which you should have been reading about and saw on a previous video. To find the degrees of freedom, what we do is we take our sample size, n, and subtract 1. So in this case, we have 40 minus 1. Our degrees of freedom here, our degrees of freedom is 39. So I need to find a t-value with 0.025 in each tail and 39 degrees of freedom. And that's how I write it. So let's look at our t-chart which was attached to this module page so you should have a copy of that if you've printed this out that's great if not that's okay too it's not necessary but it's going to be a little bit more challenging for us to read it should be obvious here that the degrees of freedom are found we're looking at 39 degrees of freedom so that would be right here we're going to be using this row we're going to be using this row but the question is which one of these is correct and another question is, what if it didn't have my degrees of freedom? So if we had 79 degrees of freedom, notice 79 is not down here. What we would do is go with the closest value. So if 79 is your degrees of freedom, you would use 80. Thankfully, 39 is here, so we have 39 degrees of freedom. The columns are going to be separated by the level of significance. So we have area in one tail and area in two tails. This row for area in two tails if you printed this out or if you have the ability to annotate this at all this row is going to be our alpha level so our alpha level is 0.05 that is right here when you look at the row above that it says area in one tail this row represents the alpha over 2 so notice our alpha level is 0.05 if we were to split that in half we are going to get 0.025 so these values that's how they're related. 0.20, uh, when we split that in half, we're going to have 0.10 in each tail. So the area in one tail is telling us how much area is in each tail. So one, you could cancel that out and even say each. The area in two tails is telling us combined. When you put those two tails together, we have a total alpha level of 0.05. So this is the column we're going to use. We're going to follow this down until we get to our row of 39 degrees of freedom, which was right here. 
2.023. This is the t value that I'm going to use. Now we're going to go over two quick examples after this. One thing I do want to briefly mention is we're doing all this because we have the requirements already met for the central limit theorem. Remember for the central limit theorem we need to check one of two things. That the population is normal or that the sample size is greater than 30. Both of them could be met but at least one is met. We're not told anything about the population being normal so that's not in this problem. But we do say here that the sample size is greater than 30 so we could have continued. So that's something we should do at the beginning but now that we remembered it we're going to do it at the end. Let's look at two more quick examples. In this example we decide to sample 10 individuals sample size is 10 from a normally distributed population good that means our requirement is already met are already met that our normally distributed population we want to create a 90 percent confidence interval so that means our significance level is 0.10 and just like with any sample we found the appropriate sample mean so we know the sample mean we know the sample standard deviation is s we got that when creating the confidence interval do we use a t-value or z-score Notice we're not actually creating it in this example, so we don't need the va these values, but this is the information that we have. We know the sample size is 10. We know that the alpha level is 0.10, which means if we split that in half, we have 0.05 in each tail. And we know both the sample mean and sample standard deviation. So which do you think we're going to use? Are we going to use the t-value or the z-score? Well, always ask yourself this question do you know the population standard deviation in this case we know nothing about the population standard deviation so therefore we will use the t values and the t distribution we are looking for a t value with 0.05 in each tail and our degrees of freedom is going to be one minus or excuse me yeah we're going to take our sample size and subtract one so in this case nine we need to look for a t-value with 0.05 in, both, in each tail with 9 degrees of freedom. So let's go to the chart. We are looking in which column? The area in two tails. This is our, our alpha level. Our alpha level was 0.10, so that's right here. And above it, this is giving us the area in each tail. So we have a, com a combination of 0.10 in both tails and each tail has 0.05 and we're going to go down until we meet 9 degrees of freedom. So here's 9 degrees of freedom. Now we're going to go over. It looks like the value we are looking for in this column is 1.833. 1.833. And that's it. Notice our requirements were met, right? Our sample size is actually less than 30. This is less than 30 so that requirement wasn't met, but we see here we have a normally distributed population, that requirement is met. One more example to go. In this example, we sample 45 individuals and we want to create a 99% confidence interval. We have this information to use, the sample mean, the sample standard deviation, and the population standard deviation. I'm going to add to this. I know my sample size is 45 and I know my level of significance is going to be uh, 0.01 and if I split that in half I get 0 0.005 now are the requirements met to create a confidence interval using the central limit theorem do we have a sample size greater than 30 yes we do we can stop that's all we needed really we just needed to have a sample size greater than 30 now we can go to this question do we use a t-value or a z-score? And remember, the question we need to ask ourselves is, what do we know the population standard deviation? In this case, we do. Yes, we do. So in that case, we are going to use a z-score. We're going to use a z-score. And we should know if we're creating a 99% confidence interval, a 99% confidence interval, a z-score with 0 .005 in each tail, is going to give us 2.575. You might remember that from when we were doing population proportion estimating and if we were creating confidence intervals with the population standard deviation known.